Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, what's up? And welcome to this uh, FFT AI tournament match version three of, uh, or I should say of FFT Revolution uh, version three beta match. Yeah, between Super Diva and his team, the Rose Cushion Brigade, and then Hero Ball newcomer. His name is, his team is, uh, I should say, Beta Toasters on bottom. And to introduce them, we got Jack the Squire, Ridley the Knight, Gans the Knight, and Clive the Priest. And now for Hero Ball, we got R2D2, the Geomancer, Johnny Five Alive, the Bard, Cortana, the Dancer, and Jocasta, the Samurai. And for Behemoth Knight, his, or I should say Hero Ball, excuse me. Um, his team is basically based off of a bunch of robots, infamous robots like R2D2 from Star Wars, Cortana from Halo, Johnny Five Alive, uh, I can't remember. There's an old school movie from like the 80s or something. And then this is an anime character. And then Rose Cushion Brigade is based off a game. I just did a Wikipedia search for like five minutes. And it's based off of uh, a game called like a series called the Radiata Sto uh, Stories or something like that. It's a PlayStation 2 game. So um, I have to make one note for you, Hero Ball. Uh, I could not give your dancer a robe of lords because they can't equip robes. So I gave her a rubber costume instead. And effectively, it's the same amount of HP if you factor in the 20% increase to your health pool with uh, protect and then 25% with shell. But nevertheless, um, yeah, I didn't really take a good hard look as to who I think is going to win this. Um, I think it's going to be drawn out, though. Let's just go to the cemetery. I know I'm using some of the same maps and not everything, but... Yeah, just get a large map right out of the way. I know that for uh, Hero Ball, I think that's how it is, Hero E-Ball or something. Um, I know that two of his units, what the fuck was that? What the hell? Oh, I think she's dancing. No, it was weird. She just stood still. I know two of his units have like 10 faith and zero uh, and one, uh, 10 brave, 10 fury and one faith. So they're going to do minimal amount of damage. They're not going to do anything. And I'm very puzzled as to why she's just standing there. I know it's early, but let me check. This is, this is weird. I taught her nearly everything and I can't, damn, I can't tell. It's a little bit too bad, but she, why is she just standing there? That's so fucking awkward. She should be moving forward. It's very odd that she's not moving at all. She hasn't like done any for th anything for three turns, which is very peculiar. Stop. Nice. You got the 20% proc, 19%. But well, whatever. Uh, the, the, the constant damage from the samurai, even with her 10 fury and one faith, it will be able to get a, she'll be able to get around those with uh, draw. But for some fucked up reason, her samurai is just standing there for three or four turns, which I find very odd. And these guys are just kind of, uh... Oh shit, Golem. Okay, that's going to be a little bit intriguing. Yeah, I don't know why that Samurai hasn't physically moved from her location at all. Death Sentence pretty good. So, again, once uh, once again, even though she's got... Even though that geomancer has got 10 Brave. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit overpowered. And, and now she decides to move. Very weird that she decided to stay still for four turns. Oh, well, then again, she did use Ether on the AI after they used Golem. And they're just standing still. It's very weird. I don't know why they're doing that. But I guess uh, progressively, it uh, looks like Hero Ball might be taking this just because of a uh, death sentence and the status infliction. Yeah, repeating fist doing minimal damage. Not really going to do a whole lot. And 100% critical quick. Yep, it's going to trigger 100% of the time because of that. And why is she just stay, staying there? That is very odd. A confusion, a frog, and darkness. Shit. <laughs> Looks like a big summon, though. Wow, so Hero Ball's team really... It's not really um, offensive. Like, it's pure status, really. From the looks of it. Like, there's really no offense. It's just inflicting status with Nameless Dance, Secret Fist, a bunch of stuff. And then getting procs off. And a confused unit. Yeah. Is she doing anything? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that was so weird. For like five turns, she did absolutely nothing. Huh. And they both broke out of confusion, at least. And I think the AI, yeah. The AI, um, even though they were like still a... S oh, never mind. 
I was thinking that the knight was still confused for some reason, but he got by hit, he got hit by that Asura, so that's why he got broken out of it and started singing right off the bat. I thought that maybe when he was singing that the um, confusion animation would be canceled out with the singing animation, but nope. That is interesting to note, and holy shit, with those two just sitting back there, augmenting their stats and inflicting nameless stance, I think he's got this one wrapped up. Yep, two units dead. <laughs> this is not good. Poison. Mass poison. Yeah, I like this setup a lot. It's pretty cool, actually. And with the frog and eventually residual damage is going to take him down with poison, it's uh, not looking good. <laughs> Yep. Probably a stop on the frog. Nope. I wonder if he'll be get changed back to a human. And he did! Yes! You see that? If you inflict the frog like spell, if you like inflict it on someone again, it'll revert back they'll revert back to their human form. And I never knew this, but surprisingly, if you're a frog, like if you have black magic and you're turned into a frog, you can unfrog yourself. Even though like even though you're actually a frog, you just reapply the same spell and you'll unfrog yourself. If you have black magic available, but yeah, you don't see that too often. And what the fuck is the samurai doing? Well, you know, I guess it really doesn't matter because the priest is dead and he's going to die soon. He does not have any uh, status. Golem. Yeah, with minimal damage, uh, I think it's kind of kind of safe to say he's got this one. Pure status, minimal damage, and with... Uh, with the dancer having more HP, she's got 265 HP, so... They pretty much got infinite number of hits here. And I'm a little bit surprised. Oh yeah, the thing is, repeating fist, its uh, damage output is completely random. Um, I'm pretty sure that repeating fist is supposed to be uh, affected by fury, but I guess in this case it's not. It is random damage output, that's the thing about it. And these guys can do this all they want, but a simple geomancy to put them down. This is uh, looks like a very well executed team, with those two just sitting there... Uh, singing and dancing away. Uh, eventually, the double turns are just going to kick in the play, and it really is there to just slowly but surely cripple your team away. It's pretty unique. I like it a lot that they're just sitting there, even though they got, you know, 75% life bar. Yep, they're just sitting there, and that Geomancer's got to get... I mean, I should say that Samurai's got to get in action. It's very odd. She's not, because that... I mean, unless, like, the Geomancer can get, like, five more points of speed and start du double turning the Squire, unless he does that, they're going to go in this loop back and forth constantly. They're not going to be able to, you know, this is just going to be postponed, basically, with the, Geo with the Squire just resurrecting all the time. So it is extremely odd that she's not moving. I'm very puzzled as to why she's not. I'm going to take a look at it. Sorry, but I'm just completely speechless. As to why she's not moving. Um, she's got float, but there's nothing saying that she can't move. Yeah, it is extremely odd that she's not, but you can't really help that. She'll break, yeah, right. <laughs> With all that evasion, get the hell out of here. And I like the use of that, uh, even though... Yeah, I like that use right there of uh, Shiva. She's got 100, fa 100 fury... I should say, yeah, 100 faith in case anybody tries to attack her. Uh, it doesn't really matter, though. Uh, they got this one wrapped up. It's just, uh, they got to break this confused units thing. Yep, that's going to do it. So, holy shit. No offense from Hero Ball, but... Or Hero E-Ball. That's... I don't know which pronunciation it is. But uh, he's definitely got this in the bag. It's very intriguing. Now, I think what could kill his team, though, is if, like, everybody hypothetically had a barrette or a ribbon, and they're all mu immune to death sentence. Um, there's a ribbon, um, death sentence, um, it causes dead, but there's a hack here that, in which, um, if you're inflicted with the death sentence, like, from Secret Fist, it overwrites canceling out dead, I guess you could say. It's kind of hard to explain, but... If you had Judo Outfit, traditionally that Squire would have survived, but there's a hack that overrode it, and that's why he was able to die, even if he had like a Judo Outfit or a Ribbon. But nevertheless, um, let's see if uh, maybe Super Devon can pull off something in the next round. Yep. So, map's a little bit smaller, and the thing is, um, this actually might go into Hero E-Ball's favor. I'm just going to call him that, Hero E-Ball, because uh, 
since most of the ground is uh tiles uh since most of it is uh consistent of tiles um he's able to get carved model procs and maybe petrify um unfortunately he didn't get it that time but it's all good so far and she's casting haste too uh that wouldn't have been so good she's got 94 fury and she's gonna be able to hit hard oh no my bad that's the other uh that's the female knight excuse me I just kind of got the units mixed up for a moment. The female samurai and the female knight for their fury values. AoE poison. Pretty good. Only two hastes. It's kind of to be expected. Miss on the one faith units. The geomancer and the samurai. Looks we got another frog. I think we did. Right around the corner here. Yep, we got another frog. Holy shit. 1% <laughs> chance of getting poison. Oh my god. And remember, I like buff the hit rate of like every spell in the game. So, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I definitely got to create some weapons that can inflict the faith status to kind of circumvent that from people just outright tanking everything and destroying all. I'm surprised. Oh, I forgot to mention that knight. He doesn't have any breaks. What he does have instead is um, stat decreases. He could like destroy your PA. You know, he's got power break, speed break. The male knight does. And that took two-thirds of his life bar right there. Yep. So Lich is pretty good now because it uh, it takes more than half your life bar. Actually, no. I think it takes like 80... Shit, I don't remember exactly how much. I think it's 74% of your life bar. In the original, is 75%. And I put it at 74% Lich because if people are going to use the race spell and come back to life, they'll still have at least a parting chance instead of just getting put down by Lich right off the bat. 74 damage. Pretty good. Then again, he's got a hundred fury, so it makes sense. And Asura, like in the original game, it only uh, attacks allies. So, or I should say enemies, excuse me. It does discriminate between the two. Looks like an Asuna, so that's a good job of the priest. I noticed that uh, Super Divan's team, uh, the Rose Koshon Brigade, they don't have a lot of uh, like raw offense, so it's going to be kind of tough for them to go through this and that geomancer is just inflicting death sentence like crazy yeah um i think the same thing is going to occur as last round because they're not really doing anything on super divan's team at all like they would have to get like stat breaks and do something about this pretty tanky interesting team and i like the utilization of uh uh, critical quick on the bard since he's uh, since he's got a hundred fury and a hundred faith, hundred percent chance of it hitting no matter what. And even if he's a full HP, it's always going to trigger. So really, if you attack that unit, speed is irrelevant because um, they'll always get turns in. And that actually is going to put a dent in the dancer because she's got actually no, the dancer has a hundred fury, so she's able to do a lot of damage. Hundred fury times one point five. Like so, 138. Yep, so maybe a Petrify? Nope, no Petrify. Just an Auto Potion for a good chunk of damage. Ether. I don't know why that Samurai is just staying back. It is so weird that she's not really doing anything. But nevertheless, I mean, he's still prevailing quite well. Now, it's up to her, though, because she's got to use item and throw item to bring up her Dancer to resurrect her. Otherwise... They're going to lose one big component on their team. And to be specific... Um, to be specific, I mean, that dancer is not going to be able to decrease their stats at all. She won't be able to use Nameless Stance in particular. And as a result, nobody will be able to like get like status procs off or anything. So, yeah, it's, um, it's kind of important that uh, Hero E-Ball's dancer stays up. Otherwise, she's just going to get... Um, she won't be able to inflict the status... And uh, Super Devon will probably possibly be able to take this away. All right. So once again, discriminates between the enemy and the AI right there. Pretty good. Yep. Lost a majority of his life bar. And holy shit. <laughs> that 100 faith is making a difference. All right. Yep. And keep in mind, even though PA doesn't affect the Geomancy formula as much as MA, it'll still increase the damage output of the Geomancer. And like right now, the Geomancer's probably going to get a turn in before that female knight. Or not. Doesn't really matter. She just killed him off. Haste on uh, the 200 faith units. Pretty good. 
damage output will slightly increase, but all we were, all we're really waiting for right now is a petrify. And he's put to sleep, so I don't know if the AI will go for it. Sometimes the AI is just stupid, and thankfully in this case they're not, because what they would do sometimes is just wait out for the unit to, uh, um, they would wait out for sleep. Basically, they would just wait until he became unasleep or whatever. But thankfully, they didn't do that, so it's a little bit good. Another sleep, though. Holy shit. <laughs> just hanging back, those two are. And with Float, yep, she's not taking any damage. Yep, this is going to be going the Hero E-Ball. And uh, although he slowly but surely won this, um, it was pretty decisive, nevertheless. There really just wasn't a whole lot of like raw offense on Super Divan's team at all. So maybe if they had breaks and like max attack, like two hands plus uh, like two hands plus 100 Fury plus Berserk, crazy multipliers like that, then I think uh, that team would kind of have a fighting chance. Slow, all right. Don't think it's really going to matter all this much. Just for the sake of it, I'm going to speed it up. And there we go. Yeah, I found that kind of impressive. 100 damage from the Bard. If you looked at the stats from the screen earlier, um, Hero Ebal's Bard had one PA with his Javelin, but he probably got all that, um, all the PA from Battle Song throughout that round, but still, it's kind of cool. Uh, very impressive, uh, very impressive intro on your, uh, end, Hero Ebal. I like that a lot. Super defensive, super divine. You just, uh, Slowly but surely got trampled, but it was interesting to see your team design as well. GG to the both of you.